Good morning, brothers and sisters, and thank you for joining us in our worship service at the Balval Congregational Church. We are happy to have you with us. I pray that God touches your hearts as it should, and I also pray that he meets you in the middle of any situation that you are currently facing. God, our Creator, we call you Father, Mother, Author of Life. Draw us closer to you, O God. Christ, our Saviour. We call you Son, Messiah, the one who saves. Draw us closer to you, O God. Holy Spirit, we call you Advocate, the Inspirer, Breath of Wind of God. Draw us closer to you, O God. Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Draw us closer to you, O God. Draw us in the Spirit, Christ and Creator, that we might journey with you more fully and deeply in this life and beyond. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we proclaim your name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are light, space and zest. You are the air that we breathe and you are the wind that we feel. Lord, I thank you for your presence. I thank you that you are always there. I thank you that you always meet us exactly where we have to be met. Lord, I pray that you forgive us for our sins, Lord. I pray that you wipe every single sin off of us, Lord. And I pray that we start this day and every other day on a new slate, Lord, so that we may be as white as snow. Lord, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for the blessings that you bestow upon us. I thank you that you always make yourself known, Lord, even when it feels like we are alone. I thank you for who you are, and I thank you for all that you are. I thank you for all that you will still do in our lives and are currently doing. I thank you, Lord. Now we pray as you have taught us to. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hi everyone. Was there ever a time that you had to do something that you thought impossible? Like when you tried to ride a bicycle for the first time? Or stand up to a bully? In the Bible, in Numbers 27, we read the story about five brave sisters who did something remarkable. They were the daughters of Zelophead. The name Zelophead, which is almost impossible to pronounce, means protection against fear. What protects us against fear? There's just one thing, faith. In those days, daughters were not allowed to inherit anything from their fathers. The five daughters of Zelophead boldly approached Moses, Eleazar the priest, the chiefs, and all the congregation at the tent of meeting. It took great faith for the five daughters to approach Moses before all of the congregation of Israel. The five daughters wisely made the plea to Moses, and after Moses prayed to God, they were granted the inheritance of their father. Sometimes I think we assume that once we are saved, blessings should just pour down from heaven on us. This is not the case. 
Sometimes blessings do not come until we have prayed hard to God, begging for change. Sometimes blessings do not come until we step out in faith, way outside our comfort zone, and watch God work through us, despite our feeble selves. Sometimes blessings do not come until we gather the courage to confront something that is wrong and to make it right. I just love the acronym for faith. Forsaking all, I trust in Him. That's God. Will you forsake all today? Will you dare to challenge something in this world that you know is wrong and push to make it right? Are you willing to make a difference for generations to come? Are you living for eternity today? Let us pray. Dear God, please help us to have faith and trust in your promises. Amen. Today's scripture reading is found in Numbers 27 from verse 1. We read from the New International Version. Zelophehad's daughter. The daughters of Zelophehad, son of Hepha, the son of Kiliad, the son of Maki, the son of Manasseh, belonged to the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. The names of the daughters were Mala, Noah, Hochla, Milka and Tiza. They came forward and stood before Moses, Eliezer, the priest, the leaders, and the whole assembly at the entrance to the tent of meeting and said, Our father died in the wilderness. He was not among Korah's followers who banded together against the Lord, but he died for his own sin and left no sons. Why should our father's name disappear from his clan because he had no son? Give us property among our father's relatives. So Moses brought the case before the Lord, and the Lord said to him, What Zelophehad's daughters are saying is right. You must certainly give them property as an inheritance among their father's relatives, and give their father's inheritance to them. Say to the Israelites, if a man dies 
and leaves no son, give his inheritance to his daughter. If he has no daughter, give his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, give his inheritance to his father's brothers. If his father had no brothers, give his inheritance to the nearest relative in his clan, that he may possess it. This is to have the force of the law for the Israelites as the Lord commanded Moses. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord, our Rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Um, good day, friends. It's uh, great to meet with you again this morning. So it's uh, Women's Month here in South Africa, and during this month, we try to shed a little bit more light on the role of, of women um, within our society. It's a time where we want to really um, work towards and pray that we move towards a place where there's, there's really justice for all God's people. Also, as we read the Bible as preachers and, and theologians, we want to wrestle a little bit more um, with the texts where they talk about, about women, for often women would be those unknown figures within the Bible, often figures with people without names. And it's our duty during this time to really just accentuate and name those people that God had been using. This morning we, we listened to a text coming from an Old Testament book of Numbers, and we learned about the story of a man by the name of Zelophehad. Zelophehad, had, when the story is told, had already died. But the main figures in the story, the main uh, personalities in the story are his five daughters, Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Terza. They are some of the many hidden figures that we find in the Bible, the less known individuals, the small names that we come across in Scripture. You see, we as, as, as people of faith would mostly know of Moses and David, Peter and Paul, but not so much about Zelophehad and his daughters. Our world and our culture is so fixated on the big names, so fixated on the celebrities, the rich and the famous. We are smitten by them and follow them on social media. When we read our sacred text, the Bible, we see time and again how God uses unknown, unsung, and hidden individuals to tell his story. Those people that we would often overlook and disregard are used by God even today. History, obviously, is, is often written and dominated by those in power. We therefore look at the big names, we look at the big players and the influential people, History is also written from the perspective of the so-called great men and sometimes women. The great man theory, which we find in social sciences, uh, says that history can be largely explained by the impact of great men and women or heroes, highly influential and unique individuals who, due to their natural attributes such as superior intellect, heroic courage or divine inspiration have a decisive effect on history. But friends, I'd like to submit today that the God that we serve is a God that looks at us differently and has shaped history not only with the big names of prominent people, but also with many small and unknown individuals. We know these people. Their names were never written on, on the cornerstones of buildings, although they were the ones building those buildings. We don't read about them in the news, but we know them. I know them. They are the ones who had prayed for us so that we can have an education. They were the ones who always told us, never give up, just, just hang in there, go and do your best. It will help us today to remember those people and also remember that God doesn't look at the outward appearance, but God fundamentally looks at the heart. We need to acknowledge that it's often the small people 
that bless us and not the big names and the celebrities. We get blessings from, from our teachers. We get blessings from, from the lady in the dining hall that serves us with our food. We get blessings from, from our uncles and our aunts. We are blessed by, by the gogos, the grannies, who unassumingly comes to us and they put a 20 rand note in, in our hands just so that we can be blessed. God has done some extraordinary things with people that are not that well known. I didn't know the names of two particular women, the names of Katherine Johnson and Dorothy, Dorothy Vaughan, until I watched the movie last year called Hidden Figures. If you don't know about this, I want to encourage you to go and watch the movie Hidden Figures because it's about black women who worked as mathematicians for NASA calculating the trajectory, among others, of Apollo 11 without a computer, mind you, to land safely on the moon in 1969. And later, um, the, the big story that reached the news that was all over the news of how Neil Armstrong made his historic moonwalk. Behind those stories are the stories of these hidden individuals, these unknown people that made it possible for them to do that. Unknown and unsung for all these years. I, I think, I think um, the lady, uh, Catherine Johnson, she reached the age of uh, 101 years and, and died perhaps earlier this year. So she reached the age of 101 until I was able to learn about her story. So it's August. It's woman, Women's Month. We would like to look at, at, at women, at unsung um, individuals, unsung women in Scripture that God uses. So we hear in, in Numbers 27 that a man by the name of Zelophehad had died and he left behind five daughters. And the names of the daughters, again, Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Teresa. They were fatherless, number one. They didn't have any brothers. And reading the story, they didn't have husbands. They were not married. And this in a patriarchal society. The rules dictated that sons could inherit land, but daughters could not. However, these five women, we don't know how old they were, but the fact of the matter is five women in this society that, that really oppresses women. They stood up and they challenged a law that was oppressive and discriminatory. If they did not challenge it, they would, would have entered the promised land and be without promise in the land. They would be without land. They would be without inheritance. They would be on the periphery of society. They would be outside of the economy. They would be poor and they would be marginalized in that new um, world of promise. And so Moses, Eliezer, and the leaders of Israel were, were busy dividing the land at the tent of the meeting when the sisters made their appearance. Now let me reiterate, friends, it was a patriarchal culture, and women had to know their place within that particular culture. But these ladies came, and in a very diplomatic way, demanded justice for themselves. I, I can imagine this, all the men being gathered there, and these five young women, perhaps, I say young, I guess, you know, um, these women come and they spoil the fun. Men often don't like it when women, their men are busy doing their thing. And here comes a group of women wanting their attention. They annoyed the men, I guess. But they came for they believed in the cause. They believed in justice for themselves. They came and they courageously, with great confidence, started to articulate and argue for what was right. You see, I think they, I said that they were courageous. But remember, courage is not always the absence of fear. But I think it was uh, Madiba who once said that courage is the triumph over fear. Sometimes we need to fight the lump that we have in our throats and move forward 
to do what is right and to find justice for a particular cause. So they say, we are the daughters of Zelophehad from the tribe of Manasseh. Our dad was a good man and he didn't rebel against God. So why should our father's name disappear from his clan because he had no sons? Give us property among our father's relatives. Beloved, I'm a, I'm a father to, to daughters. I have two daughters and I obviously love them dearly. It is important for me to raise my girls in a way that they know who they are. And I raise them in a way that they will never allow anyone to undermine who they are. To anyone to undermine the fact that they've been created first and foremost by God. And because they were created by God, they have value and they have worth. But also because they are my daughters, I tell them that I love them. It's my job, my duty to constantly affirm them and to help them to believe in who they are. For society creates lots of lies about who we can be in life. I want to encourage fathers perhaps today at this moment, fathers of daughters, to help your daughters to be strong and confident, to help your daughters to be compassionate and courageous like the daughters of Zelophehad. So Mala, Milka, Noah, Hogla, and Tirsa stood bef uh, understood the law, but were audacious enough to believe that laws can, can be made and laws can be changed. They, they, they were audacious enough to believe that laws can be constructed, but laws can also be deconstructed. There is no such thing that this is just the way things are. It was Dr. Angela Davis who said, I'm no longer accepting the things that I cannot change. I am changing the things that I cannot accept anymore. So after they presented the case to Moses and the rest of the leaders, the Bible says that Moses took the matter to God. I suspect, however, that before Moses took it to God, they must have had, it, had a deeper debate among themselves. Um, because remember, it is not easy to give up privilege. It's not easy to give things away. It's not e always easy to, to change laws. It's not always easy to, to change culture that becomes normative. As South Africans, we know all too well how contentious land redistribution is. But they came and they brought their case to Moses. And so Moses, after their, their debate, after um, going to and fro around the issue, Moses then turned to God. And God responded, what Zelophehad's daughters are saying is right. You must certainly give them property as an inheritance among their father's relatives and give their father's inheritance to them. Friends, Moses is the great lawgiver. But it is the daughters of Zelophehad who caused, for, who caused an unjust law to be changed. Moses is the central figure, but, but in his story, there are all these hidden figures, women, by the way, that God used to fulfill God's plan. Just think about his story. The story of, of uh, how uh, Sipra and Pua, the two um, Hebrew midwives, played a role. Think about Moses' sister, Miriam, who stood aground in the whole narrative to, that leads towards liberation. We see Moses, but we've got to acknowledge that God uses hidden figures to get Moses to where God wants him to be. We need to see how God uses small people, small people, hidden people in our lives. You know, I, I had to go as a young boy, I had to um, go to, to boarding school. I, later on, university, you had to go to away from home. And my mother would always say to me, my boy, you've got to remember this. You're going to leave home, but always greet people, always acknowledge people, always say thank you, always say please. And go into the kitchen, go to the dining hall and do that. And you will see how people will bless you. I can just tell you that because of simply greeting people, simply being friendly and, and respectful, I've often had a call from one of the ladies in the dining room having some more food for me. God 
uses hidden figures, unknown individuals to the glory of his name. And so let's remember the names of Zelophehad's daughters. Let us remember Milka and Teresa. Let us remember Noah. Let us remember Hoglan. Let us remember these women that God used within a patriarchal space. God bless us during this time. God bless our, our young women. God bless our daughters. God bless us so that we know that God had created all of us to participate in history and to sometimes change laws. Amen. Make me a channel of your peace Where there is hatred, let me bring your love Where there is injury, your oh, pardon, Lord And where there's doubt, true faith to be consoled is to console to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love with all my soul make me a channel of your peace where there's despair in life let me bring hope there is darkness, only light, and where there's sadness, ever joy. Oh, oh Master, grant that I may never see so much to be consoled as to console. Understood is to understand, to be loved is to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving to all men that we receive. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for the beautiful word that we have received today. I pray that we accept it with an open heart. Today, Lord, I bring every woman towards you, Lord, the bedrock of our society, and I ask that you please strengthen us as women, Lord. I pray that you be with those who are experiencing gender-based violence or any form of abuse, Lord, substance abuse, physical, emotional, and mental abuse, Lord. I pray that you lift us up out of these situations, Lord. I pray that you be with everyone who's suffering from any mental health illnesses, Lord, whether it be depression, anxiety, Lord. I pray that you please be with them, Lord. I pray that you bring a calmness over their lives, Lord. And I pray that you just look into them, Lord, and help them find you, Lord, in the midst of this. I pray for everyone that's been affected by lockdown, Lord. I pray that you be with those who are less fortunate, Lord, those who have really been suffering under the drop that our economy has had, Lord. I pray that you be with the children, Lord. I pray that you be with the teachers, the frontliners, Lord. I pray that you be with everyone who has been putting their lives on the line so that we can have somewhat of a normal life throughout something that we aren't really used to, Lord. I pray that as we go forward in this year, Lord, I pray that you just be with us, Lord. I pray that you touch the lives of every single person tuning into the service, Lord. I thank you for our minister, Lord. I pray that you be with him and his family, Lord. I thank you for the word that we were blessed with, Lord. I pray that as we move forward, Jesus, 
You just be with us. I come against any plan that the devil has against any one of us, Lord. I pray that you bind it because what is bound on earth will be bound in heaven, Lord. And I pray that you free anyone from anything that they have to be freed from, Lord. The world is so evil and filled with so many bad things, Lord, but you are good. And out of the 99 reasons, Lord, that the devil may have to tear us down, Lord, I pray that we hold on to that one, and that one is Jesus Christ. I thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, Lord. I thank you for freeing us and for giving us the gift of grace. I once again pray, Lord, that you just be with us, Lord, and guide us into where you would like us to be, Lord. I pray that you keep us on the straight and narrow path, Lord. And I pray that when it gets difficult, you remind us of your presence. I thank you for all that you do, all that you are, and all that you will still do for us. In your name I pray this. Amen. Let us receive the blessing of God and go in peace. And now may the, the grace, grace of our of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the love, love of God, God, and the fellowship, the fellowship of, of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with, with us all. all. Now, now and forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. It isn't pardoning that we are pardoned and giving to all men that we receive and in dying that we're born to eternity.